In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural stylized sand material. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material, you can get it with the links in the video description. So after I show you how to create the material, I'll show you how to join it together into this custom nude group so you can customize the look of the material. So we have a scale value to change the overall size of the entire material. Then we also have two different colors just to make a little bit of variation in the sand colors. So there's color one and then color two. Color two is just slightly more brown, but you can kind of customize that and make it more yellow or make it more of like a white sand or whatever you're going for. Then we also have this wave scale. So there's basically like all these little waves, kind of these little ripples that maybe the water creates in the sand. Then there's also the detail value for those waves. And then there's also a roughness value. And to see the roughness value, you'll actually need to turn up the detail to see the roughness. Then we also have this distortion value so you can distort it more or distort it less, whatever you want to do. And then we have like the noise scale. We have the noise detail, so you can make it more detailed if you want to. And if it's more detailed, it doesn't look quite as stylized. It looks a bit more realistic. And there's also the noise roughness. Then there's the roughness of the entire material. And then there's the waves bump strength. There is also the sand bump strength. So if you zoom in really closely, you can kind of see there's just little bits of sand. There's kind of like a kind of like a grainy sand texture. So you can change that. So if you turn it off, it's going to look more stylized. And then finally, there is the displacement strength to pop out the mesh. So if you'd like to purchase this procedure, material you can get it with the links in the video description on my gumroad and patreon you can also check out my ultimate blender procedural material pack if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials so my ultimate material pack comes with all of my materials and they're all pre-set up for blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails sorted catalogs and customizable node groups so if you set up and install my ultimate material pack as an asset library into blender you can just open up the asset library in any of your blender projects and then just drag and drop the materials into your 3d scenes you can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create more procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist. So before we start, I'll show you what I have set up in the 3D viewport if you want to set it up the same way that I have. So I went to the add menu and I added an icosphere. And then right behind me on the add icosphere settings, I turned the subdivisions up to six. So it is nice and smooth and round. And I'll just shade the object smooth. Then I'll scale the object down by a 0.2 and then just apply the scale. Then I also added a camera and just pointed the camera right at the object. And if you select the camera and go to the object data properties of the camera, I turn the focal length up to 80 just to kind of zoom it in a bit. And then right here on the output properties, I set it to 1920 by 1920, so it's a square image. Now as for the lighting, let's go into the rendered viewport mode. So I added a few different lights here. So I added this big area light right here. If I go to the object data properties, I set the power to 50 and I set the shape to disk. And then I added another area light right here as disk and a power of 50. And this is on the back to kind of add a little bit of a rim light on the object. And then also if I go here to the world properties, I added in this Chinese garden 1K HDRI from polyhaven.com. So the link is in the video description if you want to download it. And I turned the strength here to 0.8 so it's a little bit less strong. So once you download the HDRI, you can click on this yellow dot next to color on the world settings. And you can change this to environment texture and then click on the open button and open up the HDRI so it's in your project. So it's going to light the scene. And then also here on the render properties, if you go to the film tab, you can check mark the transparent button if you want the background to be transparent so you can't see the HDRI. And then also in the color management, I set the transform to a filmic and I set the look to very high contrast. So I'm in the shading workspace. So I have the 3D viewport right here and I'll go into the rendered viewport mode and I have the shader editor right over here. So I'll click on new to add a new material and I'm just gonna rename this stylized sand. And then I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on. So you can click on edit, go to the preferences, and in the user preferences, go to the add-ons tab, and you can search for Node Wrangler and just enable the Node Wrangler add-on. So I'll go to the add menu and I'm gonna start by searching for a Voronoi texture and I'll control shift select the Voronoi to preview it. And with the Voronoi selected, I'll hit control T and that's using the feature of the Node Wrangler. It's gonna add the texture coordinate mapping. And I wanna use the object coordinate, so I'll put the object into the vector because the object coordinates will place the textures on the objects more evenly. Let's change the settings of the Voronoi. So the only thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this scale here to a 12. Then what I'll do is select the Voronoi and hit Control Shift D to duplicate the node, but keep the wire plugged up. And I'll Control Shift select the 
Voronoi texture to preview it. And this one, I'm gonna change the F1 to distance to edge. And I'll leave the other settings how they are. So now we have this Voronoi and this Voronoi, and I wanna mix them together. So what I'm gonna do is search for a mix color node to mix the two colors together. And I'm gonna put this Voronoi distance into color B, and then this Voronoi distance is going to go into color A. And then we're gonna leave the mix type just set to mix, so that I can blend between only using one of them or the other one. So I'm gonna turn the factor to a 0.3, just a 0.3, so we're kind of mixing them together. Now I want to distort it a little bit so it looks a little bit more kind of wavy, so I'm gonna select these nodes and drag them back, and I'm gonna search for a noise texture. Let's drop the noise texture here, and I wanna control how much the noise texture is affecting the Voronoi textures, so I'm gonna search for a mix color, and drop the mix color after the noise. So what we wanna do is put the mix result into both vectors, and then we wanna take the noise texture factor, and we're gonna put that into B, and then we're gonna take this mapping vector and put this into A. So now if I drag this around here, you can see it's distorting it more and less, and I'm gonna take the mix type here and change it to linear light, and that way when I drag this around, it's not gonna move the texture around so much, but it is gonna distort it. So I'll turn this to a point. 195, 0.195. I do just wanna add a little bit more detail to the noise texture. So on the detail, instead of two, I'm gonna turn it to a 2.8. So it just has a little bit more detail. Let's just drag the noise texture here. I can drag these over and drag these over just to compress the node setup so it looks a little bit nicer. So now what I wanna do is put the mix result into the normal and then to convert it to bump data, we're gonna add a bump node, drop it between the mix and the principal shader. So we'll preview the principal shader and the mix result can go into the height value. So now you can see it looks bumpy, but what I wanna do is like change the smoothness of it. So what I'm gonna do is search for the RGB curves and put it between the mix and the bump. So now what I can do is I can drag this dot here into the center and then click to add another dot and drag this down here. And then we're gonna to click to add another dot and another dot right there. So I'm gonna put this dot kind of right about there. This dot, let's drag it over here. And then this dot, maybe just drag it down a little bit like that. And then what I can do is take this bump distance and I'll turn it to a 0 0.01, just a 0 0.01. So you can kind of see now what this is doing. So if I like drag this up more, these bumps here are gonna look like they're popping out more. Whereas if I drag this down, it's gonna be really smooth. So basically this shape that we're creating is gonna be the shape there of those bumps. So you can see before it's like really sharp there. Those bumps are really sharp. Whereas now they're a lot more smooth. Now let's also add some values into the base color so we have a little bit of variation. So I'm gonna take this Voronoi distance here and I'll put the distance into the base color. But then what I wanna do is search for a mix color and drop it here between the Voronoi and the principal shader. So add the mix color node. If you add the mix node, you can change it to color. And then we wanna put the distance into the factor and the mix result into the base color. So now the black and white values here are gonna be color A and color B. So here on color A, I'm gonna make this kinda of like a peachy color, and then color B is gonna be a similar color, but it's gonna be a bit darker. And if you do wanna use the exact same hex codes that I'm using, that's use the same exact color, here is color A, so you can just punch in that hex code. And then for color B, here is color B, so you can punch in that hex code. Now the roughness, I'm gonna turn this up to like a 0.75, so it is quite a bit more rough. So now what I also wanna do is add like a noise texture to add a tiny little bit of grainy bump over the surface to make it look more like sand. So I'm gonna search for a noise texture, drag it down here, and I wanna use the same mapping and object coordinates. So I'll put the mapping vector into the vector of the noise. Let's preview the noise texture and I'll change the settings. So I'll turn the scale to three and I'll turn the detail to 12 and then I'll turn the roughness all the way up to one. So now if I zoom in, you can see there's a tiny little bit of noise there. So then what I'll do is take this bump node and I'll duplicate it and drop it here after the first one and let's drag this over here and we can preview the principal shader so the RGB curve is going to the height value to convert it to bump data and then the normal can go through the normal because it's converted to bump data so now for the second bump we have this height value that we can add data into so let's take the noise texture factor and I'll put that into the height and then I wanna make it more subtle, so the distance is gonna be a 0 0.001. So now if I kinda of zoom in there closely, you can definitely see we have kind of all that grain there, but it is pretty subtle. And if you want to be even more stylized and not even have that texture, you don't need to use it. You could get rid of it or just turn the strength down, but I do like a little bit of grainy noise. So now what I also wanna do is add some displacement. So we're gonna take this mix result here. We're gonna put that into the displacement, but we need to convert it to displacement data. So we're gonna search for the displacement 
component. Let's drop this here. So what we want to do is take the mix result. We want to put that into the height value of the displacement to convert it to displacement data. And then the output of the displacement can go here into the material output displacement. So now you can see it looks really dark and that's because it is too strong. So let's just drag the scale down. Now you can see it's not actually popping out of the side of the mesh. That's because we need to open up the side panel and we need to go to the material settings and under settings surface, we want to change the displacement to displacement and bump. So let's just close the side panel. So now I can change the scale there and that's going to displace it. So I'm going to turn the scale to just 8.01. So it is more subtle. And if you have an object which doesn't have much geometry, it's not going to look that good. So if you just add it to like a flat plane, there's not really going to be any displacement because you need actual geometry to pop out the mesh. So that's why I used this icosphere. So if you have like a flat plane, you could subdivide it or add a subdivision surface modifier. So that's it for the procedural material. So let's now join it together into a node group. So I'm going to click and drag the box, select all the nodes, except the material output, and I'll hit control G to join it together into a node group. Let's hit the tab key to go outside the node group and I'll drag the node group over here and I'm going to make it bigger and I'll copy the material name and paste it here into the node group. Let's hit tab to go into the node group and I'll hit the N key to open up the side panel. And if you go to the group tab, there's going to be the group sockets. And here on the BSDF, I'm going to double click on this and I'll just rename that to shader because I like that better. Now, right over here, we have the group input. So we can plug up all the custom values to the group input. Now the mapping is plugged up to all the textures. So we can use the scale to change the entire size of the material. So I'll put the scale into the extra socket. And if I click on the scale, it's going to be three values, but I want to make it one value. So instead of the type being set to vector, we're going to change it to float instead. Then we want to turn the default value back to one, but the texture is still gone. That's because I need to hit tab and then turn the scale back to one. So we'll go back into the new I now want to add the colors, so I'll drag the group input way over here, and I can put A and B into the extra sockets, and then I'll just rename this to color 1, and then color 2. Now I also want to control the wave settings, so I'll drag the group input back here, and so we have these Voronoi textures which are creating the waves, so I'm going to put this scale into the extra socket, and then the bottom scale, I'll put that into the same socket, so this scale value will control both of them. Then we'll do the same thing for the detail, so we'll put the detail into the extra socket, but then the bottom Voronoi, the detail is going to go into the same socket and then we'll do the same thing for the roughness so the roughness into that socket and then the bottom roughness into the same exact socket so now what i can do is double click on these to rename them and i'll call this to wave scale and wave detail and wave roughness then I also want to control the distortion. So that's controlled by the linear light. So I'll put the factor into the extra socket and I'll rename this to distortion. Then I want to control the noise settings. So let's take the scale and the detail and the roughness and put those into the extra sockets. Let's just drag this down here so I can see the group sockets and I'll rename this to noise scale and noise detail and also noise roughness. Then I want to control the roughness of the material. So I'll drag the group input over here. We can put the roughness in the extra socket. Then I want to control the bump strength. So if I drag this back here, we can take this first bump strength here. That is the waves. So I'll put the strength into the extra socket. And this one, I'll double click on this to rename it and call it waves bump strength. Then we also have this second one here, which is that kind of that grainy bits. So I'll put the strength into the extra socket. And this one I'll call like sand or you can call it grain bump strength. I'm going to call it sand bump strength. Then I also want to control the displacement strength. So we'll put the displacement scale into the extra socket and I'll call that displacement strength. So I'll drag the group input back over here. I'll hit N to close the side panel and I can hit tab to go outside of the node group. And so here is the final material. So we have the overall scale to change the size of the material. Then we also have the two different colors for the sand. So you can make it more of like a, like a reddish sand or more of like a, a white sand. Then we also have the wave scale, the waves detail, and also the waves roughness. We also have the distortion. We also have the noise scale, the noise detail, and the noise roughness. Then the roughness of the material so you can make it look more shiny then we have the waves bump strength the sand bump strength and then finally the displacement strength to pop out the mesh so that's how you create this procedural stylized sand material so thank you for watching the video and if you'd like to purchase this procedural material you can get it with the links in the video description on my gumroad store and patreon page you can also check out my ultimate blender procedural material pack if you'd like to purchase all of my materials you can also check out my procedural material packs which are just packs of 10 materials and you can purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And you can also check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on my YouTube channel to learn how to create more procedural materials. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.